for this episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL-TV where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is Let's Do Brunch. I'm Katie, and as usual, I'm joined today by Beth and Elizabeth to tell us about their recipes. So Beth, tell us what you made for brunch. Friends, what I made for brunch this time is really something that is a Jewish staple and it could be eaten anytime, but I made a kugel. Uh, it's a noodle pudding. Um, it also can be made with potatoes during Passover when we don't eat noodles. But um, I I wanted to just make one because I everyone loves kugel and that you cannot screw up a kugel. And everyone makes theirs differently. So I started out by using a half a package of wide noodles, which is, um, and it turned out the the noodles, the Kroger noodles I had, had a kugel recipe on it. But I went forward with my old school style of making it uh, first. And I used raisins and crushed pineapple. You can use any dried fruit. It's pr primarily with dried fruit, and but you can use bananas, you can use apricots, you can use anything you want. Uh, three eggs, most recipes say four. Two thirds of a cup of sugar, most say one cup. Quarter cup of melted butter, they all seem to have that in common, and some vanilla. So you, you cook your noodles, mix your egg mixture with um, into a buttered baking dish. And I have a picture of my old school simple kugel right here that you can't see yet, but... Um, I was very intrigued though by the package, the Kroger package recipe. And I thought, well, I've got another half package of noodles. So I made theirs. And the difference is, oh, the, well, I forgot. You also add cottage, like I added cottage cheese. There's usually a dairy thing added to it. So in this case, it was the first one was just cottage cheese, but this, the one, the Kroger one that I played with had they used a brick of cream cheese but I used a half a brick so cream cheese cup of sour cream instead of cottage cheese and they also used a teaspoon of lemon zest and they used cranberries instead of raisins so the initially your um it looks like my internet's unstable but um so the, the first thing after you preheat the oven is you put your cranberries in warm water to plump them up. So so it just it's a little uh, extra time and effort. And both times was a lot of love. I, I intended to put pineapple in the second one and I forgot. So I just ended up it just was the cranberries. But like I said, you can put anything you want in this stuff. And here's another picture of the spring form one. Um, the first one I sprinkled with cinnamon. The second one I had cinnamon and sugar. Um, so, and both use vanilla too. So really it's, it's good stuff. You can have any time of day. Have you ever had kugel? I've never had kugel. I don't think I've ever even heard of kugel. So thank you for introducing me to it. Now, of course, I want to see the picture. I want to see, cause I have what it looks like in my head, but I want to see what it actually looks like, but tell me how you serve it. Do you slice it? Like you, yeah, in pieces. Like the round, the uh, the one in the spring form was like a like a pie, know, like pie, and the okay. others are just like you know squares. Um, so at my temple or my where I used to go, they on um, Yom Kippur to break the fast, they would have everyone bring a kugel. And there's so many different kinds of kugels. Another thing that you'll find is um, people putting corn chip, corn flakes on it, not chips, but corn flakes. Um, and if you look up, I, I looked up the history because I was curious, how, how long has this been a staple for uh, in with the Jews? And a couple, one, one said it was like from the 1500s and another said it was uh, like, 
like 800 years ago from Germany. So I saw a couple different things, but um, uh, it became sweet later when sugar was more, was easier to, to, to buy. Um, so yeah, um, I'm, I think I'm going to try making a, a savory one, which really is just going to be a noodle casserole with whatever you put in it, you know? So lastly, I did want to say when I was looking at the, um, the community collections recipes, there were a lot of Kugel recipes and, but I was like, no, I'm saving that for brunch. So anyway, that's the scoop. And Elizabeth, what did you make for brunch? Yeah, that, that sounds good. And I love that you made that. So kudos to you. That's awesome. Um, my recipe comes from foolproof veggie one pot. Um, by Alan Rosenthal. And um, ever since the pandemic, when I feel like all I did was wash dishes, I have been very interested in one pot dishes. Um, so I made a black bean shakshuka. Um, I have made shakshuka many times before. It's a baked egg and tomato dish. I'm sure you both know it's pretty easy. Um, but this had a kind of smoky black bean take so that sounded interesting to me and indeed it was pretty good um so basically um you have a kind of wide shallow pot um you heat some oil in it you add a finely chopped onion one finely sliced celery stick um uh, and a sliced green and red bell pepper um and you kind of just let those soften um, oh, and some salt, blah, blah, blah. Then you add some finely chopped garlic and then you add the spices, which are cumin, paprika, allspice, pepper, and oregano. Um, and then, you know, you're just stirring that around. You add um, a tablespoon of tomato paste and then you add um, one can of chopped tomatoes. Um, and yes, and then you fill that can with water and add that in too. So it's just kind of the bubbling stew-like substance at this point. Um, you let that reduce a little till it thickens up. And then you add two cans of rinsed and drained black beans. And you really let that cook for a good, it said 10 to 12 minutes. I actually did like 15 because I wanted it to thicken up. Um, and then they have a kind of nice little salsa recipe that you can make to top it, which I did. So while this is thickening, you make this, I mean, you could do whatever you wanted. It was super simple. It was like, you know, some corn an avocado, some scallions, a jalapeno, some cilantro, lime juice, olive oil, nothing crazy there, but so, so good, you know, and then, um, this is the exciting part. Once the mixture has thickened up, you use a spoon to create some wells in the stew-like substance and you crack an egg into each one, cover it and let it cook to, for like five to seven minutes until the egg whites have set. Um, and then you're supposed to, this one suggested you serve it um, with, you know, some fresh cilantro over it and the salsa. And then you can add, um, it said you could add cheddar if you wanted, or sour cream or Greek yogurt or whatever, I did sprinkle some sharp cheddar on top. Um, so this was good. It's a little time consuming. So it's like a weekend brunch thing. Cause really when you add it all up, it did take, it was like cooking for like 35 minutes. Um, so that's no problem, but it's, you know, it's not like something I'm going to make in the morning before work, but it's a super good brunch thing. And it would, it would feed quite a few people if you had four or six people over um it looks cool um i mean i would eat it for dinner too honestly because the black beans make it like more substantial and everything so if you kind of wanted that type of thing for dinner it would work um i thought it was good i liked the i liked the take on it and i have found that shakshukas i've made in the past i do find them a little like it's like this is just like to make like some like watered down tomatoes and egg. I'm like I'm hungry. Like what? <laughs> like I guess you put it on toast, but like so this was kind of nice because it was really um more substantial. So I don't even like I don't even think I would reference the recipe again. It was so easy, and it's most of this like just season to taste. Um, 
And so, you know, I'll, I'll keep it in my back pocket and remember if I'm in the mood that this is a, a good, a good recipe to, um, to have. So that's what I made. And this book is great. I've made several things from here. Um, so I recommend it. It's little too. It's like, mm -hmm. yeah. I like it. Yeah. The, I was thinking dinner for that. That sounds like the kind of thing that, that you're like, I don't know what to make. Cause a lot of times I'll say shakshuksa, shak, whatever. And, uh, Kurt will think of something else because it's not his favorite because it kind of is just, you know, tomatoes and eggs. But right. But anyway, right. it is more substantial and and definitely add some cheese on that stuff. Oh, yeah. So that's. Yeah, and I, I will say it's a lot of like pantry ingredients, right? That's what I was thinking. Like, and even some of the stuff is like, oh, you don't have any celery. So don't put the celery in. It's no big deal. Oh, you only have red peppers. Doesn't matter. Like, it's a pretty, it seems pretty forgiving to me. So For I'm sure. sure. Yep. Yeah, I mean that's what I was thinking as you were talking about. I'm like, I have this, I have this, like chuck, chuck, chuck could just make it. And also one of my favorite fl flavor combinations that I don't have a lot of times is black beans and eggs. Mm -hmm. And when you put like the salsa ingredients with that too, oh, it's so tasty. So I think that would be really good. And I think that's a really cool variation. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah, it was good. I'd recommend it. Um, okay, Katie, tell us about your brunch. Okay, the recipe that I am sharing today comes from Southern Living, and this is a recipe that I feel like I've been looking for for a long time. It's for deep dish loaded hash brown casserole. So it's not like super innovative, but really I've been looking for a breakfast casserole dish that isn't super egg heavy because I feel like the eggy uh, breakfast casseroles, I'm always like, oh, it's like a baked omelet or like a frittata it's very eggy I wanted something with a different base potato probably but not complicated and this is really easy so I like this so you start out by cooking some bacon eight pieces in a large skillet on your stove um, and then you once that's done you take your bacon out but you leave some of the bacon drippings in the skillet and then you cook up a diced onion um, until it's tender and uh, crumble up five pieces of the bacon and reserve uh, three other three of your pieces for later. So with your crumbled bacon, you mix that um, with your hash browns. They're just shredded, frozen hash browns that have been thawed. So you just like put them in the fridge the night before. Um, mix that in the skillet with some shredded cheese, salt, and pepper until that's combined and you put it into your grace, your greased baking sheet, baking dish, you know, the greased glass dish, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. So then uh, in a separate bowl, you whisk together eggs and this does have six eggs in it. So I was a little concerned that it would come across like eggy, but it, it didn't. So that was nice. You mix your eggs with sour cream, milk, salt, pepper, and then you pour that over the hash browns that are in your dish. Cover it with aluminum foil, bake it for 40 minutes. And then once that's done, you sprinkle it with, oh, I think it says a half a cup of cheese. I probably used way more than that. Just like cover the top of it with cheese, put it back in the oven, bake it until it's bubbly, 10 or 15 minutes, um, and then let it sit for 10 minutes. And then you sprinkle the, um, the crumbled remaining three slices of bacon over top. And it says garnish with halved cherry tomatoes and chopped scallions. I skipped the tomatoes because I didn't really want that flavor with this, but the scallions were wonderful on it. I've got a picture of what it looks like out of the oven. One of the things that I really liked about this dish and why I think it would be good for brunch is because you could take like a, a side portion of it or you could have it be like your whole big meal. You could see the picture that I have is of like a giant piece that I have with some sausage and that's just how I ate it. But I think um, that this would be good for both things. You could also eat it for dinner. I mean, that's the beauty of a brunch recipe. Um, but yeah. Oh, and I had some, this made a lot of food. So I had some leftover and I ended up freezing some of it and reheating it later and it worked well. So overall, this was a really successful recipe that I will definitely um, pull out. And I think you could do it like make ahead too. So yeah, be really nice to make for a load of people for brunch. Yeah, that sounds, I love easy things like that, where it's just like, 
I don't know. Sometimes I find brunch to be like the most stressful meal to make for others because it's like morning and people are hungry and it's like you have like guests and then like you're just like you don't want to be like in the kitchen for like hours like prepping and stuff. So and like I love how that you could easily make that with like some sausage and like a fruit salad and like people can take whatever they want. Love it. Hash browns. Yeah. So good. Yeah, we always have those kind of shreds in the house. So I could see, yeah, that sounds super yummy. That's that's what I call a, a breakfast casserole. Sounds really good. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well, it was, and everybody's recipes sound like we could have actually had a really complete brunch all together. So uh, we want to thank everybody for watching Recipe Share and be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aadl.org to find the recipes we talked about and to share your own in the comments. Join us next time when we'll be swapping recipes from our cookbook in our recipe swap part two. We're looking forward to seeing what you've been making, so thanks for sharing. Recipe Share. Recipe Share. Shit